In this lesson, we're going to talk about the probability of dependent and independent events. So first, let's talk about independent events. Two events are going to be independent if the probability of one does not affect the probability of the other. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's say that I'm flipping coins and I'm trying to figure out the probability that I flip two heads in a row. Once I flip the first coin, then the probability that the second coin is going to be your heads or tails is unaffected by what I flip in the first coin. So the probability that I flip two heads in a row, or the probability of A and B, is going to be the probability that I flip one head on my first try, which is one half, times the probability that I flip another head on the second try. So the probability of flipping two heads in a row, or A and B, is going to be one over four. So those are independent events. The outcome of the second is not affected by the outcome of the first. Now let's talk about the probability of dependent events. Probability of dependent events are when the probability of the second outcome is affected by what happens in the first trial. So we write that as the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B, and then that line between B and A is called given. So it's the probability of A times the probability of B given that A has already happened. So let's take another example. In this example, I have 52 cards, and I want to figure out the probability that I select two aces in a row. Well, the probability that I'll select the first ace is going to be 4 out of 52. Now that I've selected one of the aces, I know that the second ace, there's only three aces left, and there are 51 cards, so the probability that I'll select another ace out of the deck is affected by my first selection. So I've taken one card out, it's an ace, so the probability that I will select two aces in a row is going to be 4 50 seconds times 3 50 first. And this value is going to be affected by the outcome of the first. Now if I didn't select an ace in the first round, then the probability of B was going to be 4 out of 51 and not 3 out of 51. The last thing I want to talk about is what happens if you need to write and solve a probability with three or more dependent events. So the probability of A uh, and the probability of B and the probability of C happening all together. You just write the probability of A times the probability of B given A times then the next probability with the probability of C given A and B. And if I had a D, it would be the probability of D given A, B, and C.